Thank you so much, Lydia. Right now, 75% of small-scale farmers are concentrated in Asia, and our food and dietary habits rely heavily on them. However, the income from agriculture can be low and unstable, even though it is built by the hard work of the individual farmers. Agribody aims to innovate agriculture so that it becomes a more stable business and farmers will not have to work as hard as they do now to earn a living. In order to do that, we need to gather accurate information. We will do that by gathering farmers in the field and forming a community, then analyzing the enormous amount of data from satellites in order to get an accurate understanding of the conditions on site. This will allow us to see if there are any problems that need fixing. There are many problems associated with the agricultural business. Many farmers cannot afford fertilizer. Financial institutions do not like to give loans to farmers because of instabilities. Insurance companies cannot sell insurance to people who do not understand the concept of insurance. Manufacturers have a hard time explaining to farmers the correct way to use pesticides. Agricultural machine manufacturers often sell machinery that is over spec to a farmer's particular needs. The buyers cannot stock enough raw ingredients so many machines remain unused for long periods of time. In addition, buyers are constantly short on cash. Agribody can manage all these problems as a one-stop service. Farmers and partners with problems can share information and present solutions or collaboration methods through our app. The walls that exist between the industries and individuals will be removed. Unnecessary labor and mistakes will become a thing of the past. When everything runs smoothly, human labor can be replaced by machines, thus allowing farmers to semi-automate their work and process everything cash-free. As a result, farmers will be in a position similar to that of landowners, and they will not have to work as hard as they used to. We aim to change the world of agriculture and make everyone in the agricultural industry happy. One-Stop Agriculture Solutions by Agribody. So let me tell you a little bit about the problem statement which everybody faces over here. Uh, today's discussion, I would like to lay some light upon our major problem in the agricultural sector, which we pose as a challenge over here is that, let me give you a heads up that agricultural sector accounts to 35% of the GDP and employs a majority of the population, especially after the collapse of the garment industry recently due to COVID issues. There's a lot of dependency upon agriculture sector. So future asset-based financing schemes are majorly lacking in rural Cambodia. None of the banks or agricultural bodies want to give loan to a farmer or a person who's working in the agriculture industry. As a matter of fact, they're also not even willing to extend that loan to any of the agri companies in this uh, area because there is no future asset accountability of that farmer. So all the firms run after providing loans to farmer only who has collateral. They want live collateral. But this, according to us and our experience, it doesn't add up the logic because a farmer collateral mostly does not match his collateral or the future crop values. Second problem statement continued to this one is banks and MFIs are hesitant to give loans to farmer without the collateral. Third, credit rating systems are lacking in rural Cambodia and especially their access to players like us. Thirdly, an electronic customer verification is lacking, especially when it goes to rural area where you have no idea how to verify or actually authenticate the farmer online. Now, potential working areas. What we believe a farmer's future crop is his asset and it's a guarantee towards his loan. They hold a huge potential for MFI and agribanks to partner with private agri companies and bodies, especially like us and other competitors in the market, to analyze that and take future expected income of a farmer into account instead of land collaterals to disburse loans. As we all believe from US and the credit issues and what happened with the mortgage policy in 2008, if you keep on sabotaging and your dependencies upon the land collateral, that could be a future possibility that it could turn into a big bubble where at the end, the bank or the MFI is just sitting up with land with no buyers in the market. So at this stage, we, the major potential area happens to be all the agri partners and the banks coming in and pitching it as and giving loans to farmer based on the future income. Second, we would love to see the potential area working on developing an integrated digital platform for digital onboarding of customers especially for agricultural players like us. 
This can be a breakthrough to prevent fraud, especially in rural areas. Develop credit score and access to credit scoring data for every industry, agriculture especially, especially for customers who are new to credit cycle and who have never taken loans in the past. Because as for our experience, what happens, the, the farmers who are new, they pose a lot of threat and they lack data to verify them whether they should be onboarding our platform or not. Last but not least, agribanks and credit bureaus and bodies in Cambodia need to private with private bodies like Agribody or other companies which are competitors to us to design a product to cater the bridge, the gap between what I'm trying to propose here. Now our expectations, what are the expectations on board we have here? It's like, as I've mentioned before, our financial bodies and financial institutions in Cambodia should loan farmer based on their future assets, uh, whereas stop loaning them on basis of only their collateral because the figures are not accurate. A credit scoring system for the underbank and unbanked, especially in rural areas, and especially with bodies like CBC in place could partner with the private companies to come up with a product which actually serves the audience. Last but not the least, we would like to uh, expect something with like an electronic KYC, which comes on board for identification and authentication for us and any private player in the market. So that's it from our side. Thank you for listening to everybody and open all ears to you for your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Nishan Sharma, for your presentation about the challenge. And that is you so much for your presentation about the challenge. And that is why you are so much for your presentation It's the Q&A session now. If your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, have any questions related to the presentation, please do not hesitate to ask our presenter. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Nishan Sharma. I'm Gui Suong, Startup Development Specialist. I'm the uh, moderator for this Q&A session. So I would like to ask the first question that our team gathered from the live event. Mm -hmm. so the, the, the first question is, what is future asset-based finance? Can you explain? When I say a future asset-based finance, it's like, uh, let me give you an example. For example, if I'm a farmer and if I am putting capital to, let's say, manufacture a crop called paddy, we all eat rice. If I'm manufacturing paddy, then after four months, a future asset is developed in form of my crop. So that asset is what we call as a future asset. Thank you very much. The second question is, from a everybody point of view, does climate change have significant impact on future asset estimate? Yeah, so when it comes to a climatic change and whenever a climate change has to be taken into consideration, definitely future assets are in some kind of a substantial risk. And to mitigate these risks, there comes the local insurance bodies, which cover up the entire risk concern with this future asset. Definitely, there's a lot of dependability on the weather, and especially if you see what happened right now a few months ago because of the flood in Batamang, there was a major disaster when it comes to crops. But to protect that, there are many bodies which are giving out and rolling out weather-based insurances, as well as we, everybody are working with a government project from WICI who are going to come on board next year, June onwards to mitigate this risk for us. Thank you very much for the answer. The next question is, what are the sources of data that you will use to calculate on future income of farmer? And are you sure your data is 100% correct? Any references? Sure. Well, first of all, what the source of data you use to calculate future income of farmers? Are you sure your data is 100% correct? Yes, but what happened? Like, we, everybody started in 2016. And after working with a series of farmer, it is, it is very easy to, you know, speculate the yield of a farmer. Let's say a paddy farmer roughly yield varies from 2.5 to 4 tons, and it's not going to change overnight, logically, like, absolutely completely. So yes, the source which we use is real on hands-on experience from the ground. And yes, we believe our sources are quite correct. Thank you very much. The next question is, do you have any intention to work with CBC for farmer credibility? Yes, we would love to explore the opportunity and we would love to join hands with CBC because 
they have a lot of database which actually could be very, very useful to us. And somehow if we can electronically connect to CBC, it could be the breaking edge for us. Thank you very much. Question number five, how do you think credit score is important to farmer and Cambodian people? Now, a credit score, as you see, is kind of a, a, a number, a numeral, which is given to you based on your previous credit transactions. Now, a credit score is completely your identity for any entity which is pushing you loans. And it basically gives you the credibility to hold credit or to be awarded credit. So definitely credit score is very important to farmers because farmers are living in rural areas where they have lack of access to technology and lack of access to most of the things which we are experiencing in urban areas. So if the credit score is established for a farmer, it may be majorly impacting uh, the entire credit cycle. Also, it will mitigate the risk for the financial body who's providing loans to their farmer. And as a Cambodian, it happens to be a very important factor. If every Cambodian has a credit score, it can be a very uh, future convenience to any company which is getting on board and which is providing you finance or access to finance. For example, let's say if you, a person A, wants to go and buy a car and you have your credit score available, the loan process and every whole process couldn't be just seconds. Thank you very much for the answer. The next question is, how do you think KYC will be impact to Cambodian farmer? So KYC is the basic, basic step of any kind of an initiation to a credit cycle. And it is one of the most important factors. And for a Cambodian farmer, mostly when you go to rural area, what our experience says is, they certainly lack sometimes the ID card or they're dependent on the address book. But now there's a methodology of KYC, which has already been evaluated those farmers and they are in the database. It can actually change a farmer's life by giving him a lot of access to credit he can actually achieve. So, yeah. I see. Uh, okay, thank you very much for the uh, answer. The next question, also the last question. Do you have any uh, own, do you have your own credit scoring system for farmer in Cambodia? If yes, how do you score them? Well, honestly, we don't have an established credit scoring system, but we have an internal everybody credit scoring system in which we score the farmer based on his performance with us. Let's say from the past four years, we have certain farmers who are continuously repeating their cycles from um, more than let's say six times. So that's how when a farmer takes credit through us, through some financial institution, which is our partner. And then if a farmer pays us back, then we give him a higher rating. And then we note the value of his crop sold to judge him in a much better way in uh, his credit cycle. So we don't have a set up, set up concrete credit scoring system, but we have an internal convention, which you can say, which rates the farmer based on his performance with us in past four years. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your detailed and comprehensive answer. So this is the end of the Q&A session. I would love to give the floor to Dr. Vidita to continue to the next session. Mm -hmm.